Hi, welcome to your Chapter 5 AP Statistics video number one. There will be a, two videos for this. Um, and in Chapter 5, we are talking about understanding and comparing distributions. We can answer much more interesting questions about variables when we compare distributions for different groups. Below is a histogram of average wind speed for every day in 1989. The distribution is unimodal and skewed to the right. The high value may be an outlier. You can see it's over far to the right past 8. The median daily wind speed is about 1.9 miles per hour, and the IQR is reported to be 1.78 miles per hour. Can we say more about this? The five number summary of a distribution reports its median, quartiles, and extremes, the maximum and minimum. Example, the five number summary for the daily wind speed is, okay, you've got your maximum of 8.67. That's the value we think might be an outlier. The third quartile is 2.93. The median is 1.90. The first quartile is 1.15, and the minimum is 0 0.20. A box plot is a graphical display for the five number summary, and it's one that your calculator can do for you once you have your data and statistics page set up. It's very easy to go back and forth between box plot, histogram, and dot plot. Box plots are useful when comparing groups, and they are particularly good at pointing out outliers. Now, the one in this um, PowerPoint is written vertically. The ones in your calculator will be drawn horizontally. The principles remain the same, and it's fine to draw them either way. Uh, in this case, they, they tell you to draw a single vertical axis spanning the range of the data. You could also do a single horizontal axis spanning the range of the data. That's what your um, calculator will do. Draw short horizontal lines at the lower and upper quartiles and at the median. So if you were reorienting it where the axis was horizontal, they would be little vertical lines. Then connect them with vertical lines to form a box. So looking at the, the box on here to the right, um, that value that is between 1.5 and 3 that has a little line there in the middle, that's the median. And then 3 is the third quartile and somewhere below 1.5 is the first quartile. Erect fences are around the main part of the data. The upper f fence is 1.5 IQRs above the upper quartile. The lower fence is 1.5 IQRs below the lower quartile. Um, the fences only help with constructing the box plot and should not appear in the final display. What they're going to do is anything that lies outside the fence is an outlier. So make sure when you draw them, you do them really lightly so that you can erase them. Use the fences to grow whiskers. Draw lines from the ends of the box up and down to the most extreme data values found within the fences. Many times it's going to capture your maximum and your minimum, but sometimes, like in this case, the actual maximum value is larger than um, what you get from your larger fence. So certainly that 8 point whatever um, largest value is larger than almost 6. So it's not captured within the fence. So you would go to the largest value that's inside the fences. If a data value falls outside one of the fences, we do not connect it with a whisker. Now, the minimum of 0 0.20, I believe, is within the um, lower fence, inside the fence, and so um, that lower whisker goes all the way to the minimum value. Add the outliers by displaying any data values beyond the fences with special symbols. We often use a different symbol for the far outliers that are farther than three IQRs from the quartiles. Hi, Just one second. My son is interrupting. I will pause and... He gives his apologies. He was having his own math emergency. Okay. 
So remember IQR, in case you're going, how are we figuring out the IQR? That's just Q3 minus Q1. So you take that difference. And so values you want to keep track of are 1.5 times the IQR. And you add that to the third quartile, 1.5 minus uh, 1.5 times the IQR. And you consider that from the first quartile. And then you consider three times the IQRs. And that becomes like your super outliers or far outliers. All right, compare the histogram and box plot for daily wind speeds. How does each dis, uh, display represent the distribution? Okay, so looking at the histogram, the histogram is a little easier to tell what the shape is. You can look at it and go, okay, it's skewed right. You've got modes, uh, a mode there uh, between 1 and 1.5. That kind of information is easier to see from your histogram. Now, from your box plot, you can tell that it is skewed to the right also because that right whisker extends out further, and so do those outliers. You can see where the outliers are. Um, another thing is that with the box plot, you can see exactly where the median is, just a little below two. You can see where the quartiles are, and um, you also know that that value um, that's close to nine there is definitely an outlier. It's a super outlier. And also you get the additional information that those values right there around six are outliers as well. So that, that is meaningful for us. It is almost always more interesting to compare groups with histograms and at the shape centers and spreads of the two distributions. So what does this graphical display tell you? So we've got spring and summer, fall and winter. Well, in spring and summer, we can see that the, the middle of the distribution is much closer to zero, whereas for fall and winter, it's a little bit bigger than two. Um, both tend to be skewed somewhat to the, to the right. Um, the spring and summer, though, the, the maximum values max out below five, whereas for, for fall and winter, they're much larger. That's where all the ones that were outliers appear to be. Um, and then the minimum for winter seems to be higher than it is for spring and summer. Box plots offer an idea of balance of information and simplicity, hiding the details while displaying the overall summary information. When we plot them side by side for groups or categories we, we um, wish to compare, it makes it really easy to compare things like the medians. You can compare um, the third quartiles, you can compare the interquartile ranges because if you'll notice, the, the boxes of the box plots go from Q1 to Q3, so that represents that interquartile range, that middle 50% of the data. For instance, looking at July, um, one thing that's notable about it is that it has a low median compared to everyone else. August is the only one even close to it. And um, it has very little spread compared to other months. And especially among its uh, middle 50% of the data, the middle 50% of the data is just really squished in a really tiny box there. And then also on the outer um, ends of the data, the tails of the data, there's not a lot of spread there either. There is that one day that looks like it's a, a bit of an outlier relative to the rest of July. Um, versus say January that has a great amount of spread. It's got a higher um, a median than all the other months except perhaps, Mar perhaps March, but it has much greater variability. And we can tell that because it's got a, a, a large box. Okay, February has an even larger box. That's kind of interesting too. And then the tails, the whiskers, extend very far out for January, meaning it's got a whole lot of variability. So looking at these box plots, it tells you a lot about not only what's happening in the middle of the data, but also about the spread of the data overall in the middle 50%. What about outliers? If there are any clear outliers in your reporting mean and standard deviation, report them with the outliers present and with the outliers removed. The differences may be quite revealing. Um, one thing to note is the median and IQR are not likely to be affected by outliers. Time plots. For some data sets, we are interested in how the data behave over time. In these cases, we construct time plots of the data. Real easy to do. You just do the, the time reference on the horizontal and then what variable you're actually looking at on the vertical. Sometimes we need to re-express our skewed data to improve the symmetry because then we can really look at mean and standard deviation 
Um, and some of the methods we're going to use later on will be uh, valid once we've improved symmetry. When data are skewed, it can be hard to summarize them simply with a center and spread, and hard to decide whether the most extreme values or outliers are just part of a stretched out tail. How can we say anything useful about such data? One way to make a skewed distribution more symmetric is to re-express or transform the data by applying a simple function. For instance, you can take the common log of the data. Sometimes if you notice it has kind of a square root kind of shape to it, you can square the data. Note the change in skewedness from the raw data, the previous slide, to the transformed data on the right. The transformed data on the right is much, much more symmetric. Okay, that's it for video number one. I will join you again with video number two in just one minute.